All right, hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, it is I, John Lustria, the Education Coordinator at the National Museum of Civil War Medicine, uh, joined of course, as you know by now, by Jeff, uh, ranger here at Harpers Ferry National Historical Park, which is where we are now. Uh, and we've moved to a different area, we're no longer in town, although, if this was during the Civil War, we probably still would have we're been in town. We're still way in town. Very yeah. much yeah. right in town. Uh, not anymore. Um, if you can believe it, I'm sure you can't, judging by what you see behind me and all around you, this area used to be filled, filled with buildings. Uh, and the river, which you see behind you, this is the Shenandoah River, for those of you playing along at home. Um, this is why we're here, falling water. Um, and today's a great day for you to see how powerful water like that is. Uh, and that's what the, the, oh, the actual reason why we're here. This building behind us, uh, which was a cotton mill, that's exactly why this is here, to take advantage of the falling water, to churn the wheels, to turn the machines, and all that sort of thing. We'll get to more detail on that in just a second, but I want to say again, thank you so much for watching. This is stop three. Uh, in our on tour series here at Harper's Ferry. If you missed the previous two, uh, they continue to exist up on YouTube. When we finish up today, we'll put them all in a playlist. You can watch them all back to back to back to back. Uh, it's going to make for a great viewing experience. So that's all up there. Uh, so if you missed the first part uh, or maybe the second stop or both or whatever, you can go back and check that out. Um, we got another stop coming for you after this. So the best way to get notified when we go live is to hit subscribe on the National Museum of Civil War Medicine YouTube channel. You'll get notified whenever we go live or post a video or anything like that. So that's great. Uh, you can support us and these videos by hitting the like button, by sharing, by hitting subscribe. Like I mentioned, that's all free. That's all something anybody can do. And that helps us out a lot. Um, if you want to take that extra step, you can become a member of the National Museum of Civil War Medicine for as low as $25 a year. You can go higher than that. I won't stop you, um, but as low as $25 a year, and that supports programming like this. So uh, today we're here at the cotton mill. Uh, before the Civil War, this was just one of many buildings. You would, if you were to look down there, look down there, it would have been lined with buildings with mills and, and large wheels to take advantage of the water power here. And I had a picture to show you, but of course I lost my page. I'll show you what this looked like. Here it is. This uh, mill behind me was quite large, a four-story building. That image there, courtesy of Harpers Ferry National Historical Park, um, was taken circa 1900, so a little bit after the Civil War. Now you might be wondering, why are there no buildings here today? Uh, well, again, I point you to the Shenandoah River. Uh, much flooding over the, uh, well, both during, before, yeah. and after the Civil yeah, War. Before, during, and after the Civil War. Mm -hmm. um, and notably, uh, in 1936 is the worst flood in Harpers Ferry to date. Um, the people of Harpers Ferry threw up their hands and said, you know what, it's not worth it, forget it and uh, they sort of abandon uh, this area here, what's known as Virginia's Island. Um, so that's uh, why we're here. This building, the cotton mill, during the Civil War did not function as a cotton mill, and it had a variety of uses, uh, one of which was it functioned as a hospital site. Um, so Jeff, do you want to talk about kind of how, yes. the, how this building was used yes. and its use as a hospital. In the middle part of the war, it was used as a disease hospital. So if you had a strange fever or some non-combat injury, you'd be sent here. Uh, they describe it uh, being unclean, very unhealthy, uh, almost a, a, a terrifying experience. Uh, when a fellow in one of the local regiments that was being stationed here, 123rd New York, uh, a man named Rice Bull wrote about his friend being sent here. Looked very good, looked like he was uh, going to make it and he checked with the surgeon and the surgeon said, no, his prognosis was not good, but with some extra care, he might be all right. And uh, Bull decided to stay and help his friend out. 
and he described it that the nurses were men taken from the regiments, were volunteers. Uh, he said very few of them were professionals. Uh, he said they did have a uh, woman who was a Quaker nurse that came down and tended to the men, and he was able to tend to his friend and help out, and his friend survived, even though he lost many of his toes. He had gone in for one thing and had fevers and illnesses, and then he ended up with gangrene in the toes. But with care, he recovered and was sent home. Uh, his war was over, but he described uh, the situation where he was able to uh, camp out between the beds and stayed with his friend for any need that might arise. And in the middle of the night, uh, uh, a man who was delirious uh, stepped on him and went over and crashed through a window and he was able to grab him and hold him and pull him back in. And he said uh, the man passed away. So imagine being a nurse or worker in a hospital like that and then or being a patient where you're bedridden and you're rather helpless and then realizing you're in there with innumerable numbers of uh, medical cases that have to be dealt with so your surgeons your doctors are spread thin and your nurses are spread thin too and, and, so, and jeff do we know kind of about what the occupancy of this hospital would have been a, it one, would have been in the hundreds yeah it's a four-story building the weird thing about harper's ferry is that every commander rearranged the chessboard here. Every time a new person would come in, they would look at things and say, I'm gonna move this here and move that there. So this was a hospital in the middle part of the war. And then for a while, it became a prison, which was uh, kind of a scary place. And then at the end of the war, it had become a hospital again. Now, one of the things that it's hard to see from where we are, we are actually very close to the Winchester and Potomac Railroad. And just down the river, or up the river, depending on how you look at it, uh, you have the B&O Railroad. So if you have a hospital located this close to the river, you have rail access, you can get the patients in, get the patients out. You can also get them to the B&O, which gets them to Baltimore, to the larger hospitals. And of course your foods, your, your supplies, your doctors, your nurses can get down here. Uh, that being said, many of the houses around town at one time or another were used as hospitals. And so, you know, there's a lot of history there. Uh, the description of this one in 1862 clearly indicates that we're not dealing with the organization that we would come to expect when we look at 1864 and five sites once the army really got its act together about uh, processing sick and wounded individuals. Uh, there are houses here in late 1862 which are designated for certain illnesses or injuries. Uh, there is a, a story about a man who uh, gets a mysterious fever and he's considered hopeless and he's taken to a home in the town and he's on a cot, poor care, not many nurses, not many doctors, and he realizes that this isn't going to turn out well for him. He rolls out of bed when the doctor's not looking, crawls out a side door to the building and crawls down the street. Oh my goodness. Where a local washerwoman finds him and says, are you from the hospital? He says, yes. He says, I want to live. And she says, I'll take you and put you in bed and nurse you. And she brought him back to health and he was able to return to his regiment. So, you know, there's stories like that. These guys are, are sick, uh, they're injured. And in this part of the Shenandoah Valley, you have, even when campaigns aren't going on, you have low intensity actions as well. We're on the border over here, just over this ridge is Loudoun County, Virginia. That's uh, Mosby's Confederacy. And there are cavalry actions, there are raids. There's all kinds of things. So these guys are getting sick soldiers, they're getting injuries, they're getting things off the railroad, and they're also getting, of course, uh, military action wounded too. So they're getting a little bit of everything in Harper Surrey. Yeah, and this is uh, this is a neat little spot over here. So absolutely no, and you make a great point, Jeff. So often when you can when we consider you know any hospital site. One of the most important things, especially if it's a long-term care facility, which is what this would have been. This is not for people coming in fresh off the battlefield. This is after they've already been, you know, the bleeding's been stopped or, you know, they've been diagnosed or whatever. So this, this is a place meant to house people for a while. 
Anytime you're talking about long-term care facilities, it's vital to think about, you know, how they're going to get there and how supplies are going to get there. So, you know, the river and the railroad being so close make this really an ideal location um, for, for all of that. So that's a great consideration yep. that medical officers always have to think about. Uh, like the realtor says, location, 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 right? Absol absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And, and it's worth noting that this is primarily a hospital site in 1864. It, it sees service as a hospital other times, but yes. that's that's when yep. it sees the majority uh, of its of its patients. Um, and yeah, they bring in nuns in, in late in the war, and the nuns operate hospitals here too. Mm -hmm. so All part of that reshuffling that you reshuffling, were talking about. Yeah. For Phil Sheridan's campaigns, uh, Sheridan at one time expected heavy casualties to come into the area, and, and word was passed around, and some of the smaller hospitals had plans where they could enlarge. Uh, one hospital had the capability here in Harper Street to expand to 1,500 patients oh, wow. on a short notice, which is, is mind-boggling. Yes. You know? yeah, and and uh, to, sure. to, to one of your earlier points, you know, by 1864-65, the Army just has an incredible capability to build and add and, you know, create more space, you know, for, for these wounded soldiers. The issue of space, again, something that we regrettably have had to deal with a little bit this year, you know, amidst the, the pandemic, you know, the issue of space. Um, and the Army gets to become very good at that uh, after, as the Civil War goes on. And, uh, you know, Harper's Ferry provides some prime examples. Uh, so I, as, as no doubt you all can see a little bit, uh, thanks to this, we're dealing with a little bit of rain here. We got a brief window to come out here. Um, so we're gonna cut this one uh, a little bit shorter. Uh, and we're gonna come to you in just a, a bit, maybe five, 10, 15 minutes for our final stop of the day, um, another hospital site. This time there will be a building <laughs> for, for you all to see. So thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button to be notified when we come back live. Um, any questions? I know this was kind of a shorter video. Jake's shaking his head no. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you like, uh, share and subscribe. That helps us out a ton. Um, and we'll be back with you before too long. And there's a membership link in the Yes, chat. and uh, if you want to support us, become a member of the National Museum of Civil War Medicine. You support great video content like this. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in just a little bit.